30 to 40 percent of the usage of the NBN will be from health and health applications. So I'm going to show you what can happen by hooking up with Wangaratta Hospital, the Royal Melbourne Hospital, and myself uh, from here. So, hi Bernard and Ian. Hello, Bakesh. Hi. Um, what we have here is a 53-year-old lady who I've seen in her home with a sudden onset of weakness in her left arm and her left leg. The next thing is for Ian to do his assessment based on what I've already said and seen from a physical point of view, using the CT that he has to hand, and then he beams in to get some extra help uh, from the Royal Melbourne. The idea is for people to see that it's a reasonably straightforward process to participate in a video conference and there are significant gains for the patient and much greater gains for the system as a whole because the clinicians can work at a distance and reduce some of the time wasted in travel. Hi Bernard, look we've got uh, Miss Mary Daly, a 53 year old lady. As I said, you know, she had some onset of symptoms um, 30, 60 minutes ago. She's got a left side uh, arm weakness more than leg. Uh, some problem, mild left facial droop, um, and we've had, Mikesh has actually organised a CT for us, which there's no sign of a hemorrhage there. Uh, no other contraindications, you know, blood pressure is well controlled, 140 on 70, um, and we think she's a go for thrombolysis. Using these sorts of systems means you get the highest level of care everywhere in Australia. So it means that the time for someone to be treated for a stroke, for instance, reduces considerably and what's now called the stroke to needle time can be reduced dramatically minimizing the damage done by the clot which causes the stroke and maximizes the improvement and avoids potentially most disability. Hello it's, it's Dr. Yan here. Now with the permission I would like to examine your eye movements and then your arms. So the first part is I would like to look at your, your eye movements. Can we bring the camera a bit Thank you. And I would like you to squeeze your eyes shut as hard as possible and open your eyes. Now I would like you to show me your teeth and then relax. The next part I need to have a look at your arms. You don't necessarily need high level, high end, expensive pieces of equipment. You need a reasonably cost PC, a good high definition webcam and good broadband and the issue now is broadband is the right determining step. The video conferencing technology itself just replaces the car, it's just another mode of transport but uh, in the same way as just having a car doesn't equal healthcare, there's a lot of logistics that go on before and after in terms of making the appointment and actually getting to the right spot. So there's two ways of doing it, you can either do it in a, in a scheduled uh, environment where a specialist might just come into their appointments and uh, just uh, scroll down them. They'll see someone in person or they'll see someone on, uh, on the video screen in front of them. But the example we saw this morning uh, was uh, that the call went out from the emergency department. Um, they said to meet in the emergency department video room uh, and uh, so Mukesh uh, and the neurologist at Royal Melbourne literally just uh, went to that room, uh, hit go and there you have it. I think the whole aspect of changing the way in which we do our business is tough for people. People have difficulty with change and it's a scary process and they need to be helped in that process and have their hands held. But once they use it and see it in action and use it in anger, all of a sudden their lives change. They can see this benefiting the care that they give or the care that they get and reduce the need for them to travel which they otherwise would be stuck with. But this doesn't happen magically. You need to have a platform that can join up the care so you know at the right time when I need help and I'm sitting in Wangaratta where I'm, where I'm sitting in my practice and I'm wanting to talk to the people in my local hospital they can do it there and then and we have a way of joining up that care and understanding where they are. Similarly when Les and Ian and I want to talk to Bernard there's a way of having a scheduling process over the top of this a management process to make this happen is really key and really core. This absolutely can not just save lives, but those lives that uh, would otherwise have been affected by severe disability uh, can be minimised. So um, if I can say thank you everybody for participating, 
and listening and watching and uh, you're part of the future and hopefully the future is brighter uh, with the better technology that's uh, before us. So thank you very much. Thank you.